If you're getting ready to fight a flood, you need to know and understand the dangerous environment you will likely find yourself in, and most importantly, how to protect yourself and others around you. Sandbagging is extremely hard work and requires a lot of physical exertion, heavy lifting, and enormous cooperation. No matter what the conditions are, sandbagging can be a very difficult activity. Do not let the motivated volunteers and the excitement of sandbagging lead you to dangerous behavior. First and foremost, consider your safety. We can replace or rebuild most buildings, but not someone's health or life. If you have a medical condition that could be complicated by extreme exertion or hard work, you should not get directly involved in the filling, handling, or laying of sandbags. You can always check with the site leader to see if there are other jobs where you can make a contribution to the effort. Regardless of where the operation is located, someone needs to be in charge. Whether you come by yourself or with a group, always check in with the person in charge of your area. That person is responsible for the operations and your safety. When arriving on scene, you may also need to complete volunteer forms for accountability purposes. Okay. Before you begin sandbagging, you will need to dress appropriately for the conditions and to wear basic protective gear. Wear adequate clothing in layers and waterproof boots or footwear. Wear work or leather gloves when handling the sandbags. Wear proper headgear, sunglasses, or protective eyewear and sunscreen if working outdoors. Weather conditions at the time will determine what is appropriate. Reflective material on outer clothing is essential for working at night. If you do not have reflective clothing, wear white or light-colored clothing at night. A good rule of thumb is to always stretch before lifting and use proper lifting techniques to avoid injury and fatigue. Pace yourself if you are out of shape and be aware of your physical condition. When filling the sandbags, the person holding the bag should stand with feet shoulder width apart, one foot forward in the power stance and knees bent. It is also recommended that safety goggles be used during this process. The person shoveling should keep their feet wide apart with the front foot close to the shovel. Put your weight on the front foot and then dig the shovel into the fill. Using your whole body rather than just your arms to push the shovel will reduce fatigue. With the sand on the shovel, shift your weight to the rear foot, keeping the shovel close to your body. Turn your feet instead of twisting while releasing the sand into the bag. You may also find yourself at a filling station. A front end loader or someone shoveling by hand may be used to dump sand into a funnel or other device to fill the sandbags. When holding the bag to be filled, it is best to kneel or sit instead of squatting. If you kneel, place one knee slightly forward so that you can balance yourself as you fill and hand off the bag. One of the most common mistakes is overfilling the sandbags. A properly filled sandbag is only half full and weighs about 40 pounds, making it easier to handle and move. A good thing to do for yourself is to rotate jobs every so often. Take frequent breaks to avoid fatigue and allow muscle groups to rest. One of the most important things you need to do is to drink a lot of water and take breaks. Avoid drinking large amounts of soda and coffee with caffeine so you don't become dehydrated. There's a good chance there will be large trucks and loaders dumping and moving sand or bags around the site, so you must always be aware of what is happening around you to ensure your personal safety. Stay in eye contact and be aware of the heavy equipment operators and stay alert for truck backup alarms and the danger it signals. When it's time for you to move the sandbags, plan your lift by getting a firm footing before you move with the sandbag. Be aware of slippery mud, holes, ice, and water current that can cause serious slips and falls. When lifting the sandbags, lift with your legs and bend at the knees to save your back. Tighten your stomach muscles and keep the bag close to your body. Try to keep your back straight. Avoid twisting to change direction. Instead, shift your foot direction and then turn the whole body. Remember, toes before the nose. When in a sandbag line, grip one hand around the neck of the bag and place the other hand under the bag. Gently hand the bag to the next person. Don't throw or toss the bags. Pass the bag so as not to cause injury to others around you. It is also recommended that if possible, alternate facing each other in line versus standing side by side and keep group lines short and close together. This will permit passing the bags without straining and stretching. Be aware that sand and soil contain bacteria. Flood water is also dirty and potentially contaminated water. 
So always avoid contact with your eyes and mouth, and if possible, wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer before you eat or drink anything. Thank you. Always be very careful on the front lines of the flood fight, as the soil near the water may be very soft and give way under your weight. In addition, avoid walking or driving into flooded areas, as the force of the water and other unknowns can prove to be very hazardous. Finally, always be prepared for an emergency evacuation to higher ground. Rapidly rising water or a breach in a levee may create dangerous situations. They, they can be now you are ready to help out in the flood fight. We hope you'll remember the basics. Safety is always the number one priority. Protect yourself with the proper gear. Don't overexert yourself. Be sure to drink lots of water regardless of the temperature. Lift with your legs, not your back. And don't throw bags back and forth. This can hurt other people. That's it for our sandbagging safety tips. Remember, work safely for yourself and others.